Goodbye, David. See you in a couple of weeks. I don't think I've been to Toronto in like 20 years. 20 years? At least. Where you come from? I live in Israel. Just left Jerusalem, got into Toronto, where I will be giving a speech at the Royal um, Conservatory of Music with Megan Phelps Roper on behalf of the house. So I'm, I'm looking forward to that. There's gonna be like, they've already sold out a thousand tickets. It's very exciting, great opportunity. Stay tuned. I'm telling you. Okay, well, I'm telling you. I we're doing you too. This is great. So, yeah. I'm just glad we're finally getting to the end of it. Yay. Bye. All right. Bye. Bye. <laughs> Are we ready? Yes, we're ready. Let's go. Oh, you guys look so official with the Britney Spears things. You guys going to do like a song? I want to share with Justin Corda. Here goes nothing. Was really dope. That was like insane. <laughs> this, that's all those years of piano lessons. Did Thank your you mom, mom like force you to? Thank you, mom and dad. Wow. So Megan and I spoke at the Royal Conservatory of Music in Ontario. What a great venue. What a great event. Um, some of our, some of the other speakers were Heather Reisman. She's the CEO of Indigo Chapters, which is a big, humongous book chain in Ontario, and she's also a noted philanthropist. We spoke along with uh, Maya Ziv. She runs, she's got an app. She's a, an advocate for accessibility for handicapped people. She was amazing and very inspirational. Joe Gittler, who who f who's the founder of Leket, and they rescue food in Israel. They do amazing, amazing work um, feeding scores of hungry people with food that would otherwise go to waste. And uh, Justin Corda, who's a, a Montrealer and the sort of the executive director of the ROI community, we have links down at the bottom to all these amazing organizations and people. Megan and I were extremely well received and we had a fantastic time. It was it was great. It was great. Mike Savatovsky, who's the new executive director of the House in Toronto, put on an amazing, an amazing, amazing event. The staff were fantastic. Everyone was great. It was really, really inspirational. I love I love having the opportunity to sit there and talk with Megan. Um, and I will include a link to the the entire speech. It's only a 10 minute speech, so it was good, but it had a tremendous, tremendous impact. Afterward, we were both mobbed by people who thanked us for coming down and told us how great we were, so it's always nice to hear. And, and um, you know, we're here for another day or so, so we'll do the tourist thing and, I don't know, go to the Eaton Center and and the CN Tower. I mean, I lived in Toronto for three years. I don't think I went to the CN Tower once. I went once when I was a little kid with my parents. So we're gonna go, we're gonna go check that out and see the rest of Toronto. And I think maybe we'll head up Bathurst to where the Jewish community's at and have some, some uh, Israeli food. 
which is kind of ironic because Megan was in Israel about a month ago and uh, and we had a, we had a good time then as well <laughs> and you'd think she'd be over Israeli food but no she wants more so yeah check it out holy shit I haven't been on a subway in Toronto in 20 years and now I'm headed to the uh, CN Tower like a freaking tourist I, I used to live in this town Safe drive. <laughs> you too. Safe travels to Montreal. I will. <laughs> it's so fancy. I know. Check that shit out. Whenever Megan and I and Mike get together, we definitely discuss the sort of broader implications of our interaction and our history together. As you know, Megan used to be a member of the West Row Baptist Church. She targeted me on Twitter. We had a very polite conversation about theology and, and their really hateful ideas. They're the God hates fags people. And you would think the sort of implications of that sort of thing, where she eventually left the church because everything the church believed in was really grotesquely offensive, would be pretty straightforward. Um, and if you see Megan's TED talk, you'll notice that she talks about how it was that she was sort of led out of the church and the foundations of it all were based on productive polite discourse and like I said you would think that something like that would be sort of obvious and not very multi-dimensional and it always amazes me that when we speak people are people often come up to me and tell me wow we're so inspired and I'm always like inspired by what be polite. Don't call people names. If you want to have a productive discourse, if you want to have productive conversation, if you want to really express your opinions and ideas to their fullest extent, when people disagree with you, be polite. Don't call people names. And yet it seems that in this day and age, we've all sort of descended into schoolyard behavior. We're acting like little children. We're acting like little bullies. Intellectual curiosity, sincere intellectual curiosity is, is frowned upon. And people tend to gravitate towards echo chambers where their ideas are reinforced by like-minded individuals. And anyone that dares to express an opinion that's different is beat down. And it's something that I see on the right. It's something that I see on the left. And I don't understand what that's all about. <laughs> People are just very contentious and really married to their opinions. And intellectual curiosity seems to have just died. And that's what we talk about. We talk about that. We talk about God. We talk about theology. It's... Uh, it's always fun. Anyway, I'm next headed to Montreal and New York, and I will try and write about that. While I was here, I picked up this bad boy. Rah! So I'm really looking forward to trying it out. I haven't had a chance to try it out in Toronto because they keep me really, really, really busy. But 
until we meet again, um, stay Julicious. Bye.